Just thought I'd make a quick video saying why I am not an antinatalist. And when I say that, I say it with a little bit of regret, and, a and it's not entirely true, because I would actually quite like to say that I am an antinatalist. I would like to say that, and what I'd like that to mean is that I have a very strong interest in, and perhaps even commitment to, the idea that bringing a life into the world, procreation, is worthy of the same kind of moral concern, moral interest, moral thought, that taking a life out of the world is. If that was a definition of antinatalism, then I would go along with it completely. But it's... I don't know. <laughs> the definitions of antinatalism depends on who you talk to. But I certainly wouldn't be prepared to call myself an antinatalist on YouTube or on Facebook. Some of you may know there's a Facebook group on antinatalism, which I think has quite a significant overlap in terms of uh, membership. With YouTube antinatalists, the, the rhetoric is very similar, the language is very similar. Uh, but so why wouldn't I want to be an antinatalist? Why do I think that's a term which has been uh, made toxic on YouTube? Or it just makes it unacceptable. certainly unacceptable to me. I, I wouldn't go near that term until I can be sure it's cleaned up. So there's a lot of reasons, I'll tell you, there's a lot of reasons. The first reason is to do with, um, and this is first just in terms of what comes to mind, not in terms of priority necessarily, is, the, is its kind of resolute anti-intellectualism. It's deep, you know, and I'm, I'm generalising, I know there's exceptions, some of you out there do, do, do like the idea, or recognise the importance of intellectual thought, but a lot of it isn't. You know, a lot of the things people say, a lot of things you say, Gary, a lot of the things Determinist 1, the things that you say, um, well, I, I, won't, I won't name any more names, but you can, you can follow where I'm going with that, is just um, ridicules the idea of intellectual thought, particularly intellectual thought that's... Um, that you don't understand, quite frankly. Um, and that's a problem for all kinds of reasons. It's a, it's a problem for me personally because I'm an intellectual in the sense that I work in a university. So, of course, uh, I have my own vested interest in that. But more broadly, you know, people, sh people who are working for causes, who are trying to develop ideas, can't really afford to be anti-intellectual because if you're, if, you're anti if, you're, if you're not taking on the ideas of intellect... If you're not respecting intellect in all its forms and trying to work with that, then essentially you're condemning yourself to the backwaters of ignorance. I mean, that's what you would have to do in order to do that. You know, you, you, it would it, it leads inevitably to the kind of Southern Baptist logic of um, of you know universities as places of he of it, it just leads to that. You know, you can't do anti anti intellectualism, um, and you certainly can't be selective about it, which I also see within. Um, I think YouTube antinatalism. You know, certain ideas, certain theories, certain intellectual ambitions are accepted because they happen to coincide, whilst others are condemned not because of their content, but they're just kind of ridiculed because they're they come from an intellectual source. We don't need no book learning around here. You know, that's the kind of um, approach which is unacceptable for all kinds of reasons. And I say I wouldn't want to associate myself with that. Uh, the opposite end of that, which is also present is a kind of, um, I don't want to call it classism, but a kind of deep disrespect for the what are perceived to be undereducated people. It's the stupid people, you know, the stupid and the poor, coming for a lot of flack within antinatalism on YouTube, within some people. Again, I want to restrict that. Not everybody. But, uh, but that really was brought home to me recently. When I went and did a, made a video out in Shortlecombe Hardy. I was just standing in the middle of a street with a sign saying... Um, Life is stupid, and I had a script which I'd prepared beforehand, a set of talking points really, to do with the uh, what I perceive to be some core values within the antinatalist uh, set of principles. You know, to do with purposelessness, to do with uh, the evolution of desire, to do with the presence of suffering, to do with the moral responsibility for procreation, those kind of things. And talked to people for about an hour out in the street, a whole range of people. You know, uh, school kids. Uh, working men, drunks coming back from the pub at lunchtime, uh, young mothers with push chairs, people who are clearly Muslims, you know, white old guys who have clearly been alive and fighting in the Second World War. The uh, and what came from me there was a level of interest. You know what I mean? It not wasn't intellectual jargon. You know, and I certainly softened my approach. I didn't, you know, do any intellectual stuff in it. Didn't use the word antinatalism just so it 
because it would be unnecessary and confusing. But I, you know, got a level of engagement which was really interesting. And uh, and any kind of set of ideas which doesn't take on board what people are actually saying and and dismisses them as stupid if they don't happen to agree with you, or dismisses them as in, inherently delusional because they happen to be pushing a, a baby stroller. You know, I wouldn't want anything to do with that. You know, I mean, seriously, that's that's bankrupt for all kinds of reasons and I wouldn't want to go near it. Uh, so those things. Yeah, also um, I guess this is kind of connected to anti-intellectualism. But the, the idea that you wouldn't learn from history that's that's again present in YouTube versions of anti-natalism. That there's not, we don't need to read no Schopenhauer. We don't need to look back at the history of uh, intellectual thought. Because we're doing it right now. And the reason why that's hugely problematic is it's, it's, it condemns you to, sh to, to, to splash around in the shallow end of thought. You know, most of what passes for antinatalist thought right now on YouTube and in Facebook is really the kind of stuff that's covered in the first chapter of one of the first books of Schopenhauer, you know, kind of, you know, it's, it's, it's elementary stuff and it's like reinventing the wheel really laboriously. You know, the reason why you go back and look at historical precedents for these ideas is because the ideas have been moved on. People have done things with those ideas. You're not, you're not citing Schopenhauer as a way of claiming the intellectual high ground by association with somebody famous. You do it because you say, look, the ideas that you're talking about now as if you just invented them wholesale were thought about here. This is what he said. He said it better than you. It was refuted by this person, then Schopenhauer came back and said that, which is a really good argument, and then it was moved on by this person. You know what I mean? So these ideas have been said before, they've been said better, and they've been moved on quite a long way. Uh, and unless you recognise that, as I say, you just look retarded. You just look like you're not engaging, really. You're just pulling stuff out of your ass. That's what it looks like. And again, I wouldn't want to be an anti associated with a term. I wouldn't call myself an anti-natalist if that term meant someone who pulls things out of their ass. Uh, what else? Okay, I wouldn't want to because it argues in metaphor. Metaphor, figurative language, poetic approaches. I've got a lot of respect for that. I know a lot about it, to be, frankly. To be frank, I've done a lot of work on it. Uh, but I also know enough to know that when you're trying to make truth claims, you can't argue the metaphor, you can't argue the analogy, you can't argue the allegory. You know, you don't argue whether the trapdoor really exists or not. You don't argue to what extent DNA is a is a is a driving force or biology, or biological organisms and machines. You don't do that. You recognise that these things are metaphors or synecdoches or metonymies in those last two cases. And you go to the underlying data, you go for the theory that those metaphors and analogies try to explain. That's where you go. So if it's constantly splashing around on the surface of the poetry, it's hopeless, really. So I wouldn't want to be associated with a term that is um, used to describe people who use that kind of argumentation strategy. Because it's not a good argumentation strategy, it's bankrupt. It's one that's often used by religious folk. Uh, other reasons. Another reason would be because it's, at least on YouTube and to a certain extent Facebook, it comes as a package. And it comes as a really unfortunate package with other ideas. It's associated with other ideas. Uh, particularly things like a really crude version of hard determinism. I say it's crude because the idea that antinatalism is a cause, therefore can be activist, make changes in the future according to what you do now, flies right in the face of hard determinism. But that aside, it's, uh, it's associated for no good reason as far as I can see with, uh, with, for example, determinism. It doesn't need to be. And I wouldn't want to commit myself to a whole raft of ideas when all I'm interested in is the idea that procreation has a moral value, perhaps equivalent to the moral value of taking your life out of the world. That would be enough. Anything else just clouds the issue. And also a commitment to a metaphysical realism. This is a really weird one. I can kind of see why. People who... A metaphysical realism is the belief that, whatever way, that the world without us would be exactly the same as the world with us, just without us. It's, uh, it's a commitment. This universe, this world that we see here, is an accurate representation, accurate and total representation of the world. This, this is what the world is like. 
so I take the humans out of it, it just does that, you know, it just becomes empty. Well, that's not how, that's not how science sees it, it's not how, it's how religious people see it, it's not how, it's not how science sees it. It's a metaphysical claim, the idea that the world is inherently, in and of itself, like this, without human mind, without, it's mind independent, that's what, that's that claim. It's a difficult claim, it's almost impossible claim to support philosophically, it has a long history of people trying to. It is associated with religious ideas, it's associated with faith, it's a, cause, because ultimately it's an act of faith to believe that the world stays there when you're not there. Um, I know that sounds weird, but it's just true, look into the philosophical history of that. Um, and the kind of re resistance to that idea by YouTube antinatalists is... Um, so for me, it's partly baffling. I don't know why you would do that. I don't think you need to do that. Anybody needs to do that. But in a sense, it's also a revealing of an insecurity, of an intellectual insecurity. The ideas aren't strong enough to, re to resist um, interpretations which include better science, let's put it that way, better philosophy. You have to restrict your philosophy to, the, to, to a single world view. You have to make it the real world, and then you have to describe what the world is like. And... Um, that's it. Again, I would say that's completely bankrupt, and I wouldn't want to be associated with a philosophy. It isn't even a philosophy, I'm sorry, it's not. With a, a kind of dogma that prescribes the world in such limited, and I have to say ignorant, terms. Uh, I also, again, I also want to be, I wouldn't want to be associated, this is again kind of an anti-intellectual thing, kind of. I wouldn't want to be associated with a, a movement or a cause certainly not a philosophy, that just tries to invent stuff. I'm sorry, Gary, this is almost directed to you, but perhaps Jay Sander as well. I mean, some of the science that you pull out of your ass, you know, the equations, the maths equations of suffering, or, or Jay Sander, your graphs of pain and suffering, these are horrible. I mean, they're, they're not in the content, they're just laughable in the content. But they're, um, what is that? <laughs> it's, 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 you know... It's less than sophomoric. It's just, it's just so completely bogus, fake. You know, if, if any creationist did that, or if you know, if you saw uh, Kurt Campbell or whatever he's called, or Ray Comfort doing that, which is the kind of stuff they do, or Ian Juby, you would quite understand. We laugh at it because it is stupid. It's just stupid. It doesn't have any intellectual merit at all. But you're presenting it as if it's maths, as if it's science, and it just isn't. You're making stuff up. Um, but again, I wouldn't want to be associated with any term that has those sort of practices going on within it. So I wouldn't call myself an anti-natalist an anti for that reason also. Um, something else. There was something else. Well, I guess crypto-fascism. I mean, I, I, and this is Gary. I mean, I know you go off on one sometimes. You say stupid things. You are an arsehole. You know, sometimes you really are. Uh, and I think it's really unfortunate that you'll parrot your arsehole You know, I mean, the idea that, you know, to sterilise the poor, yeah, you just say bullshit like that. But the fact is that people pick up on it and they're arseholes for picking up on it. And there's no real other word for that apart from crypto-fascist or uh, if I had a button that would kill everyone, I'd do it. You know, half a dozen people have said that now. That's crypto-fascist bullshit. It really is. And uh, I wouldn't want to be associated with the movement as crypto-fascist. I mean, if you can't see that there's a kind of political dimension to what you're doing, then that's ignorant beyond belief. And that would be enough reason for me to stay away from that term, promise or something else, explore it in different... I, I do explore it. I talk to a lot of people about these ideas. I just don't talk to you fuckers anymore. Um, so, yeah. Um, there's probably other reasons too, actually. It's not a broad enough church, not enough people involved, not too anti-intellectual, too dismissive of the people who you disagree with far too dismissive of people who are um, uh, not of your intellectual level, apparently. The poor, the uneducated, man in the street. Far, yeah, far too cliquey. Yeah. Not self-critical enough, I've said that before so I won't repeat it. But I wouldn't want to be, in, again, associated with a term in which that kind of behaviour is acceptable. You know, you don't criticise one another, do you? And that's the thing. So, you can't criticise one another. And in fact, you will alienate one another, don't you? When, <laughs> when poor old Fidea started saying, and he's, you know, he's a card-carrying member of the anti-natalist choir. Um, no offence, Fidea, but, you know, you, 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 give it, you go for it. 
you know, but the, <laughs> the fact that he could be considered persona non grata is hilarious. I mean, uh, that, who would want to be part of a movement? The people's, what is it, the people's popular front of Judea, as opposed to the Judean popular front? I mean, it's that, it's that, isn't it? Who would want to be associated with that, really? I certainly wouldn't. Um, so, no, those are some of the reasons why I am not an anti-natalist. There are probably others. But I do think there's an argument to be had about the moral significance of procreation comparing it to the moral significance of taking a life out of the world. That is an interesting topic. I am exploring it elsewhere. Not exploring it here in this stupid, contaminated, toxic environment where stupid people say stupid things. Oh yeah, one more thing. Sorry, I almost forgot this. Derived energy. Fuck. You're, you're a candidate for this, but it, I'm sure it applies to other people as well. It's that kind of macho approach to antinatalism which I find very offensive. It's so stupid. You know, this idea that, you know, you singularly, maybe not quite singularly, because it's not just you, is the derived energy, but you singularly have got the, the balls to face up to the ugly truth. The ugly truth of reality, that it's got no purpose. And that it's uh, and it's all about suffering. And look at this picture of this lying and this tearing this zebra's throat out. And look at these people dying of their burns. And look at these insects burrowing of the child's eye. Because only you have the balls to look at these images. Sorry, mate. That is not fucking uh, philosophical uh, integrity. That is morbid fascination. I think you're confusing uh, intellectual rigor with the capacity to download atrocity porn from Rotten.com. That's not the same thing. Lots of people look at the horrors of the world. It's not hard. It's not hard. In fact, it's funny a lot of the time. That's why people go to horror films. That's why people laugh at Rotten.com images. People do it all the time. There's nothing remarkable about that. What's it difficult? What takes balls is facing doubt, facing certainty, pushing an idea forward, not sitting back and looking at pictures of atrocities. So that's another reason why I'm not an anti natalist I wouldn't want to be associated with that match. Anyway, it's probably too windy to make this video on the YouTube, but there you go, look, the world without us. Oh shit, it's got a dog in it.